okay that's the one should be turning right to left Let's see what we've got carry wise the spin number is so low get up ball get up ball again let's see what the spin number is why is this thing spinning so low the driver i just tested was that the one there there's many other versions there's natural ls version which is of course low spin this is the max product did you see that spin number okay so i'm reasonably happy if you watch this channel you will know i'm an average golfer i can hit left i can hit right and now and again i get one down the center so from a dispersion perspective performance wise this actually performed really well but there was one factor which i am absolutely baffled by and despite many different changes that I made in terms of the setup and in terms of the shaft, it never changed. Now also in this review, I will show you just how different um, clubs are manufactured in terms of their performance. We all talk about all things are equal nowadays. There's no difference between one driver and another. And I beg to differ. And in this video, I'll certainly demonstrate that. And forgetting the three different models that we've got in terms of the Cobra heads and how they've been put together, I will be testing my probably preferred driver of this year which has been the Callaway Rogue I'll have exactly the same shaft in that as I do in the Cobra driver and I'll show you how each of them perform very very differently with uh, one particular factor indeed and it's quite alarming the difference between the two with exactly effectively exactly the same setup the number on screen right now is my average spin number with this driver in hand yeah average spin number in fact, right across the board, there's some numbers that are actually lower than that in terms of spin. But the odd thing is, I've never seen that in terms of performance. So what you're next going to see is my average launch angle with this driver in hand. And for me, when I hit a low spinning driver, what often happens and where I have real problems with it is one in getting it to a decent airborne in terms of a decent launch, and then it just nose dives out of the air and I get no kind of carry. And this doesn't do that at all. I'm completely baffled by it. So we've got a high launching ball, sometimes almost too high in the launch. We've tried this in so many different setups to get an optimal number. I've been in a 10 side white shirt, blue shaft, which is my regular go-to shaft for pretty much most drivers I test. We've then gone into hazardous. We've gone into 10 side white. We've traveled, so, tried so many different shafts the results are exactly the same. This is one incredibly low spinning driver, but still incredibly high launching. And we're getting okay ball speeds as well. But the biggest thing that impresses me about this range of drivers that has been released from Cobra and the range of fairway woods and everything else that goes with it is the way they look first and foremost. If I'm honest with you, I've never been a huge fan of the way in which Cobra drivers have looked in the past. The yellow and red may be a bit too bold for me, Underneath of this is still perhaps a little bit busy for my liking, but it's been toned down significantly. Looks really tidy, but it's really at a dress where this really, in my opinion, stands out a mile as being one of the best drivers out there right now in terms of A, framing the ball and just looking damn good when it's sat behind it. It's that Matt Crown again. It's almost very much rogue-esque. It's very difficult to separate it from the two. They use the same color schemes, but whatever they've done, it looks really, really good. And it sits, the profile of the driver itself sits just really nice at address. And yet again, a decent high launching ball. And in terms of dispersion, like I said, I'm always gonna spray it around a bit, but overall this thing has performed fairly tightly. We're not traveling huge distances here this morning in terms of our carry distances. My swing speed, it's first thing in the morning on a Monday morning that is as well. A little bit cold in the UK, balls aren't traveling as they would be. But we've got that kind of 230 carry, that spin number's really worrying, but the high launch is a good thing and that whole combination of performance seems to be okay. It's just seeing that real low spin number is really worrying. And for any that's think that is sort of, um, well, not on target i worry about it a bit but price point has always been a big thing for cobra in terms of stealing a march on its competitors but this time round, i uh, will inform you they've come in at 399 so that puts it much more in line with the rest of the players to be quite honest with you 
and they've always sort of had that 349 price tag. It always gave them a little bit of a um, steal and march, if you like, on their competitors and always give you an extra reason to go down the path of Cobra. Will that make or affect your judgment this time round? And what are your thoughts on that 399 price tag? Interesting move, that one for me. Now there's three different models. We've got the LS, which is low spin, low launch, medium forgiveness. We've got the X model, which is low spin, medium launch, high forgiveness. And the model that I was drawn to straight away, the Max product I always am, which is low to mid spin, high launch, extreme forgiveness. Extreme forgiveness, yes. High launch, yes. Low to mid spin, well, I'm certainly finding very low spin right now. Let's see if we can find out a little bit more about why that's happening and what separates these three driver heads. Well, I suppose it's self-explanatory, but the three heads differ based on where the weight is placed within that head and what they're looking for in terms of performance. We're gonna start off with the X model, and as you can see, right at the very back there, you've got 10 gram worth of weight. Pretty much a standard thing that we've seen in a lot of drivers. There's also an ex a lot of weight being placed right at the very forefront of each of the three drivers as well. But then it changes up significantly in the LS model and the weight is moved from the front to, uh, front to the back rather, to very much in front. And we always again see that for the low spinning driver, you want that weight almost directly behind where the, uh, the impact location. And then the max product that I was referring to and you've got a draw bias driver and weight at the back, obviously interchangeable as well. And you can very much change the draw bias weighting to, uh, to alter and affect further effect that draw bias if you like so fully understand how the three heads differ like i said what i still don't understand is why the spin is so low and is that dangerous or not right so as i suggested earlier i'm going to hit some balls with the identical shaft in exactly the same loft it's ten and a half degrees it's the callaway head they do look very very similar at address this is the max product i'll be using from callaway and uh, oh, that's a decent ball there has been a huge difference in that spin number. So again, what it shows for me is this. I'll put the average spin number that I've collected in terms of the Callaway uh, Rogue Drive, the Max product, and I think around 3,000 revs has been the average number. So that's a considerable difference between that and that of the Cobra driver. And all I really wanted to demonstrate, I'm not suggesting one is better than the other, and again, find your optimum number in terms of all those uh, spin and uh, launch criteria, that's key for you as an individual. But anyone that suggests that every driver is equal, I think if we've seen there, same shaft, same loft of head, obviously the setup within those, in terms of the weighting structure within them driver, pay a considerable difference to the end result and how the ball gets from A to B. One with 3,000 revs of spin on average, the other not even breaking 2,000. Yeah, again, another ball that just, if you can see the, uh, my eye line, it's looking directly up into the sky. This baffles me. It could be, like I said, the ultimate combination because my issue has always been with a couple of drivers, low spin drivers that I've tested in the past, my issue has been being able to launch the ball because I don't have a great club head speed and therefore the ball just falls out of the sky and that becomes a major problem because there's no carry on the ball whatsoever. That's not happening with this driver in hand, so it's still high launching. I'm still getting the same carry distance, but keeping spin incredibly low, which means if you look at total distances, it's running out arguably for miles if we were on the uh, finding the fairway, that is, of course. So I am still baffled as to how this combination has been put together by Cobra, but ultimately, that's exactly what I have found. I've not even tried into the other drivers as yet, because to me, from a forgiveness perspective, this is the model that majority of average golfers would go towards. It feels really good. It looks really good. And those combination of numbers that I've just suggested mean that it is a major player. Interesting thing for me this year is, and it borders on annoys me, baffles me. I just, yeah, surprised. And that's the price point. Cobra did so well with bringing their product in at 349. They were a, a, a good chunk underneath those market leaders they were up against. They've chosen to put this one in at 399, so again, it now brings it much more in line with its competition. But arguably, it is performing right up there with uh, the sort of stealth, with the uh, Rogue, 
I think it looks superb. I mean, they've really got a decent driver on their hands. I'm late to the party on this one, and I've seen uh, reviews that have suggested this is a decent major player, and I would have to agree that is certainly the case. Whereas for me, I've been put off by certain little things about Cobra drivers in the past, not this time around. So I'm gonna leave it at that, it's short and sweet. You've seen my numbers, um, they have done the same as what I would normally achieve with driver in terms of carry launch, but the spin number, very, very low. But if that ball is still getting airborne, if we're finding fairways, arguably this thing would run on for absolute miles. It could be a big one. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. I'm gonna hit a few more balls because I am still, uh, would like to see if we can make any difference to that spin number. I'm not sure why, it's just, you know when you're told that the optimum number is around 2,000 revs, and you don't sort of hit that number, you sometimes question it. Anyway, last one. The one thing I've done is found the middle as well. Wow. It's an interesting product, I'll say that much. Right, I'm off. See you soon.